Hi, my name is Inia Basi and I'm an artist, broadcaster and writer. So don't forget to subscribe to Zamari TV for more amazing content. Ini Abasi, popularly known as Ini, is a broadcaster, writer, and an artist. The mass communication graduate has many interests, but according to her, art remains her true love. Drawing influence from the Bible and societal issues like feminism, mental health, among others, Ini's works can be described as abstract. She was once an honor personality at Smooth FM in Lagos, hosted a very popular radio show called The Casbah. She's happily married to popular musician Femi Leye. So, Ini Abasi Leye, <laughs> how does the name sound? It has like a very fun ring to it. It, it, it sounds very strange. <laughs> Are you serious? I was saying, like, it's, it's not my name. It was my name now. It's your name now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting used to it. It's, it's growing on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's good to find, have you like in this space. I remember, you know, when I met you, this was not in the picture. No. You know? No, it wasn't. And now, you know, we're doing our, our radio dreams and all that. I know. And now, oh my God. we are here, we're painting, yeah. we're exhibiting and all that. How's well, the journey been for you? I've always been painting, though. Always. Mm -hmm. It's just that. I just used to do it at home in my mom's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> She's the only one I know, oh yeah, my siblings. I had a sketch pad, it should be around, some, around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I just used to like, I'd be at work mm -hmm. at the radio and still be looking at videos and pictures of people mm -hmm. painting and, you know. Because I never knew that there was a whole world to it. Like, my mentality had been that you can't really do art professionally. And people mm -hmm. who do art professionally are usually for fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was the mentality okay. I had. Yes. And you know, my dad actually said it to me. I wanted to study fine art in school. And I remember he called me and he was asking me what do I was studying when I entered university. And I said fine art. And he laughed in my face. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to send you to school to go and be a papa. So go and think about what you want to do and come back and tell me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, here I am. Even though he was actually supportive. He, I think he, he was more of the mentality that I, I could do art as a hobby. Like on the Not side. as a full time yes, profession. Yes, exactly. But, I, but now I know his mentality has changed about that. She had a huge show on the radio. It was popular. Yeah. You know, there was a whole, there was a huge event that was named yeah, after your. That was nice. After your radio <laughs> show, you know, and you know, yeah. you had some of the big, you know, jazz artists come perform there and, and everything. Yeah. And at the point where you decided, like, okay, fine. I've done this, I want to go chase my, I want to go fulfill what I feel I'm called to do. You know, did you have any doubts as regards, oh, how will I eat, how will I survive? No, I didn't actually, I just knew I wanted to do it. I, I was, I, I was aware of the fact that because people had told me, oh my God, you don't have a 95, you're going to suffer, it's going to be hard. You know, people are telling their own stories of how, oh, from battery to Ajay, you don't have even 15 hours to get there. So like, I had all these scary stories in my head. But I was ready. I was ready to embrace it. I actually looked forward to it. It wasn't as bad as, okay, it was bad at some point. Yeah. To be honest, it was. <laughs> but I looked forward to it. I embraced it and I just told myself, if if I, the radio job, nobody got it from me. I worked hard to get it. And I, even while I was there, I worked hard to, you know, to keep it. So I told myself, if I could do that, then I could do this. And I just felt, to me, in my mind, the minute somebody says, you know, you can't do this thing. Ah. That's when you say, I'm going oh to do Oh my God. It. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going like this. I warned you, why is nobody going? I said, because that place is hard. Let me go and experience the hardness for myself. Mm -hmm. That's how, that has always been my mentality. So I wasn't really scared. I was I was actually looking forward to the journey. Mm -hmm. Because like I said before, I had no idea that there was a whole world of the business side to art, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, the major exhibition side to art. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just, you know, and the more I discovered it, the more I knew that I see from I have This to, is what you're meant to yeah, do. Yeah, let me just follow my heart and my dream and not deceive myself. Since you made that bold steps on now, you know, what would you say has been your major highlight? Man, um, I think the major highlight for me has been meeting people who genuinely appreciate my art. You know, it's one thing for you to work on something at home, just mm. here, in this little corner. <laughs> <laughs> Which is and really then, nice, by the way. <laughs> thank you. And then for you to now take it outside and people now begin to appreciate your art and they're like, wow, and then they're reading their own meanings into your life. <laughs> so do you tell them that that's what you're thinking? Because I, I I always imagine like you know you see them and you're like oh my god the depth of the I love the richness of the, of the of the hue so and I'm, it captures the pain 
of the artist, no, you know. So what? No, what, the funny thing I did. Somebody said, "Oh, it was an abstract painting." Yeah. Someone said, "Oh, I can see people in my mind." I said, "People." <laughs> I said, oh, God, when I put this thing, I just I, I had a long day. Or I had a long day. I just needed an outlet. <laughs> just, so, so do you go? Oh, yes, people. Or do you go? No, I actually. I, I, you know what I? You know what I learned is that people arts will always tell people what mm. they what it wants them to mm-hmm. see. So I will tell you what I felt when I painted it. What you see is just completely different. Mm-hmm. If you see that, I'll just be like, okay, that's 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 nice. It's <laughs> nice that you see that. <laughs> but honestly, that that was not the um, that was not the best. <laughs> That was not what I, I know you see people, but we were thinking of trees. <laughs> yeah. we were you know, it. we were just thinking, you know. Yes. Yeah. But then sometimes, sometimes people are spot on. Mm-hmm. And that, that actually trips me a lot. Sometimes people look at it and they can actually feel what I like. There was a painting I had, um, and, and the person said, I, it was a painting of a firstborn. Mm-hmm. It, it was called Adia. Adia means first daughter in my language. And you know how um, firstborns always carry the weight and responsibility of the whole family. Yes, They're they like do. next parents. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I tried to, to paint the um, the weight and the burden of that on her shoulders and how she felt. And every time people looked at it, they, before I would even speak, they would feel it. They would, mm. they would, you know, they would, they would say that they felt that. So I think mm. for me, that's been the highlight of my art career so far. Mm. Quite short, but yes. But the journey mm. has been really nice. I've evolved. I've learned a lot of things. Can't stop learning. And practicing is always a joy. Experimenting with new stuff. Like now I'm experimenting with alcohol. <laughs> but do you miss the radio though? <sighs> Some days, yeah. A lot of days, no. <laughs> so new. So we're going to go now. Uh, well, let's just say I'm, I'm happy where I am. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If the opportunity comes in here, yeah, sure, fine, but I'm not looking for any opportunity. That's it. <clears throat> so, I know that, um, I know um, last year you, you opened up about some of your struggles, you know, and you decided to talk about, you know, a very private, you know, incident that happened to you, and I think that it has evolved your person in the public eye, and how you have become this beacon of hope for a lot of people. Because, you know, it happens to men also. Women are men who have been through that entire situation. You know, talk, talk to us about it and how that part of your journey has influenced the person that you have become right now. Oh, well, hmm. So where do I start from? Let's see <laughs> Well, okay. Um, four years ago now. Yes, four years ago. I was, I was so used to say three years ago. Four years mm-hmm. ago now, I was, I was kidnapped and raped. And it, it was a whole journey of you know, getting through it because um, in during the healing process, I, I was still going to work. I was, you know, I was still living my life. I perfected the act of being okay and not okay at the same time. So nobody would ask me any question. Nobody would know stuff like that. In fact, the day, the, one of the days, the very first day you came for an interview, mm-hmm. as, yeah, I had just finished crying. I had, I had cried. I, I was at work. I remember it was a Saturday. It was raining. I remember that day. And I was, I was, I had been in the bathroom. Oh, I had gotten to work really early. I was crying. Oh, wow. I was just so sad. And then, you know, so that was how I perfected that act. You know, just cry and then just wow. come out and you know, kill it. And we had like an amazing time. We and did. We took selfies afterwards. We did. I remember we did fun times. Anyway, when all of this happened to me, I made up my mind that I wasn't going to be one of those people that, oh, um, I got raped and then I would become a recluse. And I won't, you know, move forward in my life because that happens to a lot of people. Things happen. It's not like it's their fault. Mm-hmm. Things happen, and you just it stunts your growth on mm-hmm. all sides, psychologically, mm-hmm. um, physically, mentally. You know, but I was determined that that happened to me. Even though you can't drop the process, which I learned later, mm-hmm. but I now learned after my healing was that, you know, there are so many people going through what I'm going through as well, and the fact that I was able to fight it and come out of it with God. Um, you know, I, I learned that if we all go through things for a reason mm-hmm. and and you know, if you're going through this it means that you're supposed to help somebody else because you're never blessed for yourself. You're always blessed to be a blessing. That's the reason why God gives you the things that He gives you so that you can help make the world a better place. And so I, I guess maybe coming into that understanding and it also helped me to have a very, very close relationship with God. I already had it, even though there were a lot of ups and downs. There were a lot of times of me going somewhere and coming back and saying, God, I'm sorry. That happened like so many times, you know. 
but the way God is, God is the episode of love and he will love me regardless. You know, a lot of people that have gone through um, what you went through, it, it's kind of like tough, you know, to get into a relationship and all that, you know. Um, how were you able to easily move into that space, you know, where you, you, know, you found love and now you are in a healthy marriage, you know, how did, how, how, you know, just, I really want to understand how that process happened. Okay, well, I, I've been lucky. I've been, no, not lucky, not lucky, I'm blessed. I've been very blessed, extremely. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's one of the testimonies in my story as well, that, you know, this happened to me and it didn't affect my relationship at all. It didn't affect my marriage at all. Um, I think um, the other part of this whole story is that I was raped and kidnapped, yes, but then after it happened, I went, my life like went downhill. Like the whole healing process, everything happened in the space of three years. It was crazy. Um, I, I developed this concept in my head that if I had sex more often, it would help me get over the fact that I was raped. Huge mistake. If, <laughs> huge. I, I always tell people that that's the worst thing you could ever do because you can't do what God can do for you. You can't. So yeah, so I went through the whole process of, you know, after highs and terrible lows of, of, of having sex up and down until one day I decided that enough was enough. I actually just, I was so disgusted with myself. I just felt like, you know, I was tired. I was tired of being sad and depressed. I remember, another, Harry, you've been in my life, Sha. <laughs> another one of your shows, I think it was the first one. There's this magazine you were doing. Yada. Yada, yeah, the launch of it that day. I don't know if you just, my eyes were so swollen that day. They were so, I came by, I, I carried out. If I said I wasn't going, but then I remember that I made a promise to you that I was going to be there. So I came. I still saw a picture of it on my laptop like two days ago. I said, like, hey, oh my god. My eyes were so swollen. Yeah. I had cried my life. I, 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 I saw that in the corner. Yes, because I, I couldn't talk to people. Because just saying hi, the tears were just standing. So I was just quiet and all. Oh, how we took that picture, I have no idea. And guess what? Family was there that day. He was. <laughs> anyway. He performed, apparently. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, but, but I've been blessed. I've been blessed because. Um, I think I think it all. I, I've been blessed, but then I think it all comes down to um, making up your mind that you want to be better, because that's what I did. I made up my mind that I wanted to be better. I didn't want this life anymore. I wanted to be free and happy. And I I I just told God that you know what I'm ready. Whatever it is you want to do, I have no idea. And I began to I began my own journey of self healing, which was which meant me fighting my mind, meant me spending more time with God and the more I did that the more I had less time to think about whatever it is that happened to me and over time I just realized that there was no pain I wasn't sad I was actually living my life in freedom and having you know coming into marriage people actually did tell me oh when you get married you know these things they're gonna come back when you start having sex I'm just like I I don't want to tell you that I've had sex already I, I passed that phase. <laughs> then, then, you know, there, then there were some people that said, well, even if you had sex before, now that you have sex with your husband, you know, is this one that you love, is in the confines of marriage, which I, that makes no sense to me. Because I just, I, I've been blessed. And also, your mind is, very, is a very, very strong and important tool. If I listened to all those people I said, it would definitely happen. But I didn't. So yeah, I, I was just like, this is, your, your mind is actually very, very strong an important tool and I made up my mind that this is my marriage, this is my life, it doesn't have to be what everybody says it's going to be because people say oh it has happened or people are, it doesn't have to happen mm-hmm. to me if I make up my mind that this is going to work and mm-hmm. you know that's the mindset and then I believe in my healing, I believe in God and I know that God will not give me something to make me cry after, the blessings of God added no sorrow so yeah I've mm-hmm. been I've been blessed. That's amazing. What is your match right now? What is your what do you what is what do you mean by? Oh, I live by God, man. I live by God. If God says it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. But then there's also a promise that God gave me. Um, I remember the first week after um, the whole incident had happened. I was lying down in my bed. I was looking out the window, and God asked me. He said, "Do you trust me?" I said, "Yes." I can you see the sun coming up. I said yes. He said, as long as the sun rises every morning, you'll be alright. And every time I see the sun come up, I actually always feel like God is smiling down on me. It's like a promise, it's like a seal of a promise to me. And I believe it. My mantra is just believe in God, really. Aside from this whole promise that God gave me, just believe in God, anything is possible. 
and not just healing, pursuing your dreams and actually achieving it, setting your mind to do something and actually doing it, mm -hmm. having love, mm -hmm. interesting, healthy, beautiful, amazing love is, is actually possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, smiling and talking about love. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, so love is a beautiful thing. I mean, I mean, the you band was right. <laughs> we married to um, a musician in Nigeria, a yes. very fans no. of the Nigerian music industry. No, actually, because he, he's also a very God fearing man and he's the most humble person that you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. No, this is not even me being biased. Even before we started dating, when we were friends, um, I wanted to help him so badly. Like I wanted to like make sure I played his music because he was so humble and so hardworking, and and he's also. And it was an acoustic like, house. Yeah. Were you guys busy at the time? <laughs> no, we weren't. Oh, okay. Kevin was still in his feelings. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are no worries. I I, mm -hmm. I trust him a hundred percent. Um, we try. We've we've been through enough together to know that there's there's nothing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. And he knows that his trophies are home. There's nothing to great for us. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what are you working on presently? Um, okay, I'm, I'm working on my husband's EP cover. Yeah, this is um, it, right? Yes, this is it. So tell us about this cover. I can't really tell you until it drops yet. Well, I'm not done yet, so okay, maybe I can tell you, Shark. Okay. And, uh, well, it, it's called the Highlight EP. Mm. And basically, I try to portray Highlight in the colors. And you know, Highlight, when I think about Highlight, I think, I think Africa. I think vibrancy and so yeah I tried to portray that without using the color yellow because when people speak of vibrancy yellow is always it. So I use orange. No I don't want. So I use orange, I use blue, I use pink and black, a little bit of black. So I'm not done with it yet because I still have a lot of things I'm going to paint on it still to, to bring that out. And then I'm also working on my next solo exhibition. Okay. It's next year, March or April between um one of those months and i'm so excited about it mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be really amazing like it's actually going to portray how much i've evolved in my art and you know um topical issues in society things that people wouldn't naturally talk about and stuff like that it's coming up next year and i'm really excited about it what do you want your legacy to be okay <laughs> well um i i hope to be able to give back to people of any age you know the hope that art gave and is still giving me and i want it to be said of me that i was a lover because mm -hmm. i i know that after all is said and done after everything what god requires of me is to love regardless mm -hmm. in spite of irrespective of because that's what he did to me or did for me and is still doing for me mm -hmm. and i also wanted to be that my legacy would be that i died of I died devoid of any color or form because I painted the whole universe with it. And because I I also love the heck out of it. So yeah. It is very deep. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Thank you very much for doing this. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. coming and for having me. Such an honor. Thank you.